This, this is Wildcast. Is Wildcast. Good evening, Wildcats, and welcome to Wildcast, your source for in-depth news at the U of A. I'm your host, Lauren Stapp. Tonight, we'll take you out onto the streets for the 4th Avenue Street Fair, teach you about the new cooking craze on campus, show you how to get a job in sports, and take you to another local hotspot for your cup of joe. But first, the 4th Avenue Street Fair began in 1970 when 4th Avenue merchants put tables in front of their stores to attract customers before the holidays. Our reporter Courtney Griffin shows us what the street fair had to offer last weekend. The streets are filled with people and cars for the 4th Avenue Fair. Let's take a look at what they have on the street. Both of these vases took about 10 hours each because they're one-of-a-kind patterns. The glass is my canvas. Um, I do all my own original designs. With around two to 300 local vendors, you could find anything from art to clothing, bags, hats, candles, jewelry, food, and other fun trinkets. As for the food, Dale Inji has his way with his pasta. Uh, I hand make pasta out of wheat and just original herbs and vegetables. I just puree them and throw them in there. It's an all natural pasta and it has around 40 different flavors. Some more food, a creamy cold treat to help vendors and walkers stay cool during this hot weekend was Dairy Queen. I wanted to see how busy this local business got. And then all of our workers are working, so we're like, this is jam-packed, and it's hot, but it's okay, it's fun. There's plenty to do on the avenue to have fun. You could even see yourself as a cartoon figure. I wanted to try for myself. I actually started doing these when I was an undergraduate to help get myself through college. And these caricatures take him about five to ten minutes to complete. He has done around 60,000 of these. In fact, he was one of the first vendors here at the very first 4th Avenue Fair. It was truly like a actual like a block party more than than anything else. No longer a block party now. The fair brings in around two to three hundred thousand people strolling through Fourth Avenue to see all the unique things. As for the vendors, the the Fourth Ave show is just always worth coming to. I will never skip this event. For Wildcast, I'm Courtney Griffin. If you want to check out the 4th Avenue Street Fair next year, mark your calendars for December 9th through the 11th. And are you a sports fanatic but thought you needed to get a real job after college? Well, the Sports Marketing Career Fair has a different idea. Reporter Kylie Staples tells us more. Recently, the Sports Marketing Association, or SMA, had its second annual career sports fair. Um, the SMA Career Fair, well this is actually the second annual Sports Marketing Association Career Fair and it's just an opportunity for our students to network with uh, sports industry people. Uh, we have a lot of people out today, um, some from the U of A, like myself, we have a gal here from the Coyotes, some people here from Fox Sports. So it's not just about sports marketing, it's about anything in sports, just giving our students an opportunity uh, to make those connections and create those those networking opportunities to help them get jobs. This year, President Jeff Robin gathered 18 speakers from various prestigious companies involving sports marketing. This year we kind of went more towards all the professional teams are here, all of them are represented. We have uh, Fox Sports for people that are interested in broadcasting. Uh, we have people, someone from MySpace who no one ever thought MySpace would be involved in sports. Uh, we have a lot of utility companies that are involved in sports like Truly Nolan, APS, uh, we have the Phoenix International Raceway, which is another area I guess people don't really know about. Uh, we have people from the U of A, so we have the Alumni Association talking about how you can get involved after, uh, as well as how they can help you get to where you want to be. Um, and we also have UA Athletics, so we're going to have people here conducting interviews, telling them kind of you know what they do at UA Athletics. So we have a broad spectrum. Any U of A student is welcome to attend SMA events. Getting involved is easy and encouraged. So, um, well, everything is messaged out through SMA, so that's just joining SMA and coming out to sporting events, stopping by my office in McHale Center, room 263. Um, we can get you on the listserv, emailing our president, Jeff Robin, um, just doing any number of things, contacting the athletic department. They are the official um, group for the athletic department. We really rely on them for helping us at different sporting events. and. Um, we pull from SMA for our student interns, so that's why I'm here today is I'm going to be conducting interviews for our future student interns. So 
anything really, contact us, come to meetings, and we message everything out through SMA to, to be a part of the sports career fair. For Wildcast, I'm Kylie Staples. If you think sports marketing is up your alley, make sure you check out their career fair next year for a chance to stay sporty in the real world. Coming up next, we'll show you why the homeless in Tucson will be having a fancy feast thanks to these Wildcats. Staff Advisory Council is known for helping advocate for university employees, but last week it also advocated for the Tucson Community Food Bank by stuffing the cat drain. Reporter Marlena Hamilton gets you on the bus. People are really hurting right now. They're in need. The Staff Advisory Council at the U of A, along with the Tucson Community Food Bank and Parking and Transportation, have had their fourth annual event, Stuff the Cat Drain Food Drive. It is one of the many events that the U of A campus puts on to raise money. Stuff the Catran raises both military funds and food for the Tucson Community Food Bank. Last year, the food drive collected about 3,200 pounds of food and $200 for military funds. To note, though, that that $200 of uh, monetary donations, for every dollar that, we, uh, that the Tucson Community Food Bank receives, it's actually $10 worth of food for them, so they can make it stretch quite a bit. So it's, it's about $2,000 worth of food for them. And uh, what, uh, what we're hoping to do here today is we're hoping to exceed the 3,100 uh, pounds of food and exceed the $200 of monetary donations. And there's people from all over the community, as well as the U of A campus, that are coming by today to drop out here and uh, hopefully we'll be able to stuff the bus. Kirsten French, Special Events Coordinator for the Food Bank, said that what is so great about the UA Food Drive is that it is in early to mid-April and they are low on food then. People always seem to remember to donate food during the holidays, but not always around this time of year. Remember Community Food Bank and those who need food during the holiday seasons. We always seem to have plenty of food and, and we need it to give it out. But as the year goes on, people forget that um, that hunger doesn't take a vacation, and we're, we just continually need food. So this is wonderful to have it this time of year. The food drive was held on April 6th and went from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. That's uh, well spent and, and well worth it for, for the UV and for the community. For Wildcast, I'm Marlena Hamilton. Stuff the Catran is part of UA's program, UA for Food, a partnership with Pima County and the Tucson Community Food Bank that began in 2004. And if you were at the 4th Avenue Street Fair last week, you probably wandered by this local coffee shop. Reporter Charles Mizra takes you behind the eclectic doors of Epic Cafe for This Week in Food. Every once in a while, you run into a place that has a lot more than you expect. Epic Cafe is much more than a coffee shop. It's a center for the creative, the casual, and the eclectic. Some people even say that Epic Cafe is the closest you can get to Berkeley without ever having to leave Tucson. Epic Cafe has just about everything, from fresh made soups, salads, sandwiches, quiche, and lots of vegetarian and vegan offerings. They even have cakes, pies, flan, everything you can think of. And of course, they have great coffee and tea. Yeah, so Emily, what do you like about Epic Cafe? Um, I just love the atmosphere, you know, the colors, the people, there's so, such a variety of food between breakfast, dinner, lunch, you can get anything that you want. What I have here is one of my favorite. It's called Nadi Tadi. Uh, it's over ice and I put soy milk in it. It's delicious. I just, what, what did you like about the atmosphere? Um, well, I love that, you know, there's just like a, a different type of people everywhere. The lighting is perfect. There's couches, there's chairs. You, can, you know, you can, be, you can be comfortable while you're doing work. You can be sitting here talking like we are. Um, what, it, what did you say, the naughty toddy? What, is it, what exactly it tastes like? Well, this is actually just an iced coffee, but you should try it. Oh man, I can give that a go. Check this out. Oh wow, that is good. No, I really, um, 
that you can, it, it does have that coffee feel to it, but it is, it's definitely, it's definitely a knockout in terms of flavor. It's definitely I a unique like flavor. That. Definitely yeah. a unique flavor. One makes you want to come back. Right, for sure. sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. Um, well, thanks, Emily. Uh, Thank like you. Thank you. So if you're looking for a great place to hang out, study, or just grab a cup of coffee, Epic Cafe on 4th and University is the place for you. For Wildcast, I'm Charles Misra. If Charles piqued your interest about Epic Cafe, make sure you stop by. They're open from 6 to midnight daily. When we return, we'll take you out of the dorm room and into the kitchen for healthy eats on campus. watch Top Chef doesn't mean you're a pro in the kitchen. Reporter Sarah Canty tells you how to improve your skills at this campus cooking event. Sick of union food or tired of breaking the bank eating out? The Student Health Advisory Committee held their fourth cooking class on March 29th featuring five ingredient meals. Advisor Hannah Feeney explains the idea behind the cooking class as part of the Cooking on Campus series. We had a collection of four different recipes um, that had five main ingredients. So we didn't include things like olive oil or spices and that kind of number of ingredients. And so again, it was really simple. You could apply things to kind of an apartment you know that you were living in. You could do it in a kitchen that's in the residence hall, or if you were just living in a house and you know had a family, five ingredient simple meals so that you kind of cut down the cooking time and the shopping time um, to make those meals. The renovation to the rec center included the new instructional kitchen allowing for the new cooking classes. Not only are the meals easy to make, they are also healthy. A lot of things that um, you think that you find um, at Highland Market or wherever um, are all junk food, but that's wrong. If you look in the right places, you can find all these ingredients with ease and learn how to cook this awesome food, and which is good for you. Students express their positive feedback. Um, really informative, had a really good time, tasty. Yeah, I thought it was great. It was really uh, easy, easy to understand and uh, stuff everybody could use, even freshmen to seniors, so pretty cool. The $5 cost allows you to try the food, learn new recipes, and gain useful cooking skills. But you really leave with the tools to go out and save money by shopping and cooking for yourself rather than eating out. So the $5 investment, I think, pans out and may actually end up saving you money down the line. The last class of the semester will be on Tuesday, April 26th. And the theme is no cook cooking. So, you know, it's hot now. Nobody wants to cook cook with the oven and the stove. And it'll be a variety of things, simple things that you can make that you don't have to turn the stove on or turn the oven on or use the microwave. For Wildcast, I'm Sarah Canty. The cooking classes are a result of a partnership between Campus Rec, Campus Health, and the Student Health Advisory Committee. Well, that's all we have for you tonight. Remember, you can watch all these stories and more on our website at uatv.arizona.edu. From all of us here at Wildcast, have a great night, and we'll see you next week.